Would you bow your heads and hearts with me and let us pray together? Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Thou art the potter, and we are the clay. Amen. I'm going to edit a little bit freely so we can compress this down, because we've also got communion to do, and it'll go just fine. People thought Jesus was crazy, and they had good reason to think that. He'd made some outrageous claims. Uh, when asked if he was the Son of God, he said, I don't deny it. The scribes and the Pharisees thought right then and there, we've got to kill him. We've got to get rid of him. Far better that Jesus should die, one man should die, than to lead a whole people astray from what they understood and thought the laws and the rules of God were. You see, Jesus had a polarizing effect on people. You either liked him or you didn't like him. You were either with him or you were opposed to him, it seems. C.S. Lewis, the great Christian author and writer and thinker, said, a man who was merely a man and said the sorts of things that Jesus says wouldn't be a great moral teacher. He'd be a lunatic or he'd be the devil of hell himself. You have to make a choice. Either this man is the son of God or something worse. Jesus' family was worried about him. They thought maybe he had slipped over that line between being a genius and maybe insanity. They weren't sure. They were proud of him. They loved him. They cared deeply for him. But they were embarrassed by him now and the things that he was doing and saying. The religious authorities all said, he's got a demon in him. And then he said, how can a house be divided and still stand? And we know that Abraham Lincoln, Illinois' favorite son when he was president, made a famous speech, the house divided speech, when he talked about how can our nation stand half free and half slave. He was taking that directly from Jesus here in Mark 3. Jesus went on further with his dialogue. He said, I tell you, that the sins of all the people in the world can be forgiven. All blasphemies can be forgiven. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit and denies the Holy Spirit, well, there has no forgiveness there. You see, the scribes and the Pharisees and the people, they saw God's goodness in Jesus, but they said it was evil. They saw God in Jesus, but they said, no, he's a devil. And that was a problem. If Jesus were a devil, they would have been right to execute him, I suppose. But what they did was they saw God in Jesus and decided that they would call it evil because they wanted to maintain their own grip on the religion of their day and their people. The scribes and Pharisees were so upset because Jesus upset the apple cart of their status quo. He said he wanted to change the way people understood their religion and the laws and the things that were restrictive and prescriptive about how they lived. He said God has made this wonderful world that he wants us all, all of us, to work together and to know the coming of God's kingdom. The coming of God's kingdom. His mother and brothers came to visit him. There were so many rumors about him. They thought, maybe we can go and talk him into coming home with us and we can care for him. They stood outside, and when the disciples knew that the mother and brothers were outside, they said, Jesus, your family's here, they want to talk to you. And Jesus looked around at those who were gathered with him in the teaching, and he said, you are my mother, and you are my brothers, and you are my sisters, if you obey God and do God's will. That's what I want obedience. When I was um, in Texas serving a congregation as a student and an intern, um, I knew that finally the people there had accepted me when they stopped referring to me as that Yankee from Illinois and started to call me Brother Ford. <laughs> That's when they get you, uh, you know, they invite you into their circle of faith and their culture. Uh, I was their brother, not only their brother in terms of uh, Christian faith, but they accepted me as one who was a leader in their church. Uh, Jesus calls us brothers and sisters, and 
wants us to know his kinship with us as we follow him, as we obey him, as we recognize in him the presence of Almighty God. Earl Weaver was the manager of the Baltimore Orioles, and it was back in 1976 when Reggie Jackson came to the Orioles. He was a star player. He'd already made a big name for himself out in Oakland, and um, he was going to come to Baltimore only one season, actually. Um, then he went on to New York. Um, there was one rule that Earl had as the manager, and that is that nobody stole the base unless Earl gave you the sign. Reggie Jackson was, you know, a star. He thought he understood baseball pretty well. He was fairly cocky. One day he decided, I'm stealing second base. I'm standing here. I can beat that pitcher. And sure enough, he did. He didn't have any problem at all. He beat the throw. You know, he slid in, and he stood up and dusted himself off before the ball ever got there. After the game, Earl Weaver called uh, Reggie aside, and he said, Reggie, you did a good job today. You played hard. You played well. But he says, I got to tell you something, Reggie. You broke my rule. I didn't give you the sign to steal, but you did. He says, here's the problem, Reggie. The batter following you was Lee May. Lee May was a big hitter, good hitter. And when Reggie stole second base and left first base open, right away they said, you know, uh, we're going to walk Lee May intentionally because he's such a good hitter. So you robbed Lee May of a possibility of a good hit. And secondly, the guy batting behind Lee May was not a good hitter. And uh, I had to pull him out of the lineup and put in a pinch batter that I could have used somewhere else because you were trying to steal second base, Reggie, but I'm trying to win a ball game. You see, Lee May and uh, Reggie and all those guys are lined up the way the manager had seen how it could work together for a positive result. We only see a little bit of the game, but Jesus sees it all, doesn't he? And he sees what's best for us. He's happy to include us on his team and call us brothers and sisters. Whoever obeys my will and does the will of God are my brother and sisters. And what is the will of God? To love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. And to love your neighbor as yourself. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.